Imagine you have a two-headed snake in front of you, and you suddenly decided to feed only one of its heads. I won't ask why, maybe just for the sake of the experiment. The consequences are the thing I'm interested in. To figure out what would happen, we first need to understand how snakes perceive the world. Different species of snakes have different vision, some have perfect eyesight, some only distinguish light from dark, but all of them use their sense of smell to track down their prey. And when one head suddenly catches the smell of prey near the other, naturally it attacks and tries to swallow the second head. But this is just one of the problems. The two heads of a snake are connected at the neck, and if both of them eat at the same time, there's a chance that the reptile will simply choke on too much food in its throat. To avoid this, two-headed snakes in captivity are fed mice in different positions. For example, one head starts eating its mouse from the head and the other from the side. This way, the two heads eat at a different pace. There's no temptation to eat the other head. The thing is, the problems don't end there. Sometimes after getting twice the amount of food, the stomach sort of clogs, and this leads to indigestion. However, dinner is served to both heads at the same time anyway, even if one of them isn't hungry. After that, it's important to carefully wipe both heads clean, otherwise in a couple of hours, one of them may smell food and still try to swallow the other head. The heads have no attachment to each other at all, and can only eat if there's a physical barrier between them. Well, they could eat without it, but in this case, one head will inevitably finish the meal faster, then try to take away the rest of the food from the slower head. And although the behavior of two-headed snakes may be similar, their body structure might be different. For example, some individuals have two heads and two necks, but one shared stomach. Others have two completely independent throats and two stomachs. Some even share the neck. However, according to scientists who studied a sufficient number of such snakes, in most cases, each head has its own esophagus and trachea, and sometimes even its own heart and a set of lungs. In general, these are usually just two independent snakes that fused with each other. There's even a case of a hermaphrodite snake half male, half female. Well, it's impossible to verify this story because the specimen was lost, but if you think about it, it's quite possible. After all, having two heads is not an evolved trait, so each two-headed animal will be highly individual. Where the split occurs along the body determines the location of the organs, their number. Well, actually, it determines everything. If two heads are very close to each other, it'll be much more difficult for them. The greater the separation, the more independent each head can act. However, a double set of organs doesn't mean that the life of the creature will be twice as easy. For example, two heads with two different stomachs are more likely to fight each other for prey and starve compared to the snake with one stomach. Not to mention that the animal has to somehow remove waste from the body. If there are two stomachs but only one way out, well, this becomes a real problem. Sounds pretty logical, but here's a fact that surprised me most. We have no idea how the snake brain in one head perceives the other head. They seem to get used to each other. Those snakes still don't realize they'll share nutrients anyway, even if one head gets food. Each brain gets a hunger signal and each decides it should go for food. If one head has food and the other doesn't, they'll start fighting. But aside from fights, how terrible will the consequences be if only one head got to eat? Well, from what we've been able to find, no snake will die of starvation. In any case, the body will receive nutrients. And if there's only one stomach in it, then the head left without food may not even feel hungry. Now, if there are two stomachs, we got a problem. Not of the lethal sort, but an unfed head will feel hungry, stressed. It'll try to find food and fight over it. Well, that's inconvenient. Of course, when an animal has two heads, then there are two sets of instincts, biological drives, and other things like that. But sometimes one head of a snake simply relinquishes all control to its sibling. Scientific observations have shown that sometimes one head becomes dominant and the other just obeys without making any decisions. That is, maybe it would want to make them, but it's too late. Sometimes one head dominates the other because its sibling may be missing a trachea, esophagus, or even eyes. But when both heads have the same set of organs, it's not so easy to determine the dominant one. According to one of the articles we came across, all decisions are usually made by the right head and the left one obeys. Another article says that in a certain two-headed snake, the left head was the dominant one. It reacted more actively to stimuli. At the same time, the esophagus was more developed in the right head and the trachea in the left. Try figuring all that out. In fact, all two-headed snakes are divided into two types. 
The first type is a snake with an extra body part. In this case, it has one stomach and overall a standard set of organs, plus an extra head. The second type is two independent snakes which simply fused into one but retained most of their organs. But the most interesting thing is that each of the halves has a separate personality. In 1993, scientists conducted a study on a black rat snake and found that each head had different prey size preferences. Each head had different eating habits. The left one was a rather voracious eater, the right head was much more restrained. Perhaps if we were talking about more emotional two-headed animals, it'd be possible to study their personalities by other manifestations, but snakes don't have many leisure options. Now, imagine the following situation. One head of a venomous snake bites the other when they fight over food or some other reason. The venom gets into the body through the wound, reaches the heart they share through the vessels, and after a few last heartbeats, the snake dies. In fact, it doesn't work like that. We'll see the same exact thing which happens when one venomous snake bites another venomous snake of its own species. That is, nothing. Cases when a snake bites another snake of its own kin, or even itself, are actually quite common in nature. This can happen by accident, or maybe on purpose, and if venomous snakes hadn't learned how to live through such bites, they would have gone extinct long ago. However, they've evolved to be immune to their species' venom. For example, in the muscles of a cobra, the venom of the same cobra is neutralized by sugar molecules that prevent toxins from attaching to neuroreceptors. Snakes simply can't die from their own venom. But this doesn't mean that one head of the snake can't kill the other. Moreover, Harvard herpetologist Van Wallach claims to have documented many cases of such murders. And they always end the same way. If one head kills the other, it sets off a chain of catastrophic consequences for the winner. You can say that after the death of its sibling, the rest of the body begins to decompose, which leads to the death of the second head. I don't think there's any way to survive that, especially if this happens in the wild and there are no people around who would intervene and save the reptile. Strictly speaking, in such conditions, snakes with two heads generally live very little. When one head wants to crawl in one direction and the other one disagrees, it makes everything slower. The snake will become easy prey for predators because it simply won't react in time. Not to mention the fact that nutritional difficulties cause severe stress, which shortens the lifespan. Two-headed snakes are bound to have issues with feeding. First, the heads make decisions on their own, without consulting each other. They send signals to the muscles to perform a certain action at the same time. And as a result, they achieve almost nothing. And that's actually the best-case scenario. Sometimes the struggle to move in different directions flips a two-headed snake onto its back. Hunting like that is almost impossible. And second, without the intervention of people and any barriers to separate them when they eat, the heads aren't willing to share prey. Like at all. Van Wallach, who claims to have studied 950 two-headed snakes, says that without supervision, two-headed snakes almost always fight over food to the death. And here we have a reasonable question. If these snakes can't hunt properly, can't always avoid predators due to conflicting urges, then can they actually have offspring? After all, that also requires a uh, certain coordination. Well, I couldn't find any research on this topic, but two-headed snakes rarely live to the age when it's time to think about reproduction, and if they do survive somewhere in the lab, then no one runs any experiments. They're worried about the safety of the snakes. However, we still came across information about the herpetologist Enrique Font from the University of Valencia. He had a two-headed male snake, and he was going to mate him with an ordinary female snake. Unfortunately, we don't know what came out of it. If you know anything about this interesting experiment, make sure you share it in the comments. However, if that two-headed male becomes a dad, this doesn't mean his kids would also risk hatching with two heads. This anomaly is called bicephaly. It's not inherited, and happens when the embryo begins to split into identical twins, but doesn't separate all the way. Since it kind of stops halfway, the twins stay connected, and the points of connection can be very different depending on the stage. The exact same thing happens to people when conjoined twins are born. While in humans, such twins can be born, for example, due to incorrect gene expression, snakes have trouble with separation because 
It's too hot. We're cold. Seriously. Scientists suspect that two-headed snakes can appear as a result of temperature fluctuations, inbreeding, or pollution. Although reports of two-headed snakes are also found in very ancient sources, so it's unlikely that global warming is to blame here. Meanwhile, there isn't much information about two-headed mammals. There's a scientific explanation for that. According to Dr. Justin Adams of Monash University, there are at least three of them. First, mammals have something like a built-in checking mechanism of the embryo right in the mother's body, and if it has some serious deviations, the baby is simply not born. Second, reptiles lay eggs, and they're more easily exposed to all sorts of detrimental influences such as temperature, radiation, and chemical toxicity. And finally, reptiles simply have more babies. But even taking into account all these factors, two-headed snakes are a rare phenomenon. Of course, it's hard to check how things work in the wild, but a paper published in 2013 in the journal Comparative Pathology found that out of 4,087 pit viper hatchlings studied, only three hatched with bicephaly. Out of 324 rattlesnake hatchlings, none had bicephaly. Well, I have one important question left. If there are two-headed snakes, how about snakes with three heads, or five, or even seven? In 2019, a photo of the snake skin, which allegedly had seven heads, went viral on the internet. Before that, in 2013, there was even a photo of a living snake with seven heads that also did rounds on the web. Alas, all these are clearly fake. Over the years, sightings of seven-headed snakes have been reported, but none of these events have been verified. This is confirmed by Snopes, the fact-checking website. Even three-headed animals are quite rare, and no living animal has ever been observed to have more than three heads. So a snake with three heads could have been born, but it wouldn't have survived. You saw how hard it is to live even with two heads. And there are definitely no animals with five or seven heads. But don't worry, though. Nature is full of other equally exciting and sometimes even incredible stuff. Take at least, well, better leave that for the next video. We'll see you later.